So do you remember when I was planting these hay racks and said I was practicing restraint by only planting three super tunias in them? Well, not today. So earlier this year, I stumbled upon this planter and a designer named Pamela Crawford. Uh, I had never heard of Pamela before, but this is called her garden tier system. It is essentially a pole that has a huge spike. I felt like Buffy the Vampire Slayer in my front yard trying to put it in the ground. I'll show a picture to the side. They also make this system to fit inside a container so it goes down into a container and screws onto the base of a container that's really large to hold it up. Uh, I just wanted the steak. This is, I have one, I'm trying it out this year and if I really like it and it does really well, I'm thinking about putting, buying a couple more and putting them in front of the driveway. So this container right here, I got the double stack and it, it holds 18 plants around the sides and then anything you can fit in the top. So while I was practicing restraint with those containers, not so much here. So the only way I've been able to do this is all of the plants I purchased with the exception of one were on clearance and discount. So I love this time of year because if you're looking to put any more colorful annuals in your garden, you have good luck going to your big box store and finding things on clearance. So I went both to Lowe's and to Home Depot and everything I purchased was $2. I'm gonna go over some plants I'm gonna use in this container uh, and give you the specific varieties. So if you wanted to replicate it, you could. I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I've got a beautiful combination of whites, pinks, and purples. And the first one we're gonna go over is Supertunia Royal Velvet. Supertunias are great. They have a beautiful purple bloom here. Um, I have never grown Royal Velvet before. You know I love Supertunias. I have them both in these hay racks and other containers and in the landscape this year. The next variety is Dichondra Silver Falls, which is a great spiller I have also not used before. We have Diamond Frost Euphorbia, which has beautiful, it gets very large and has beautiful airy um, white blooms on it. So some of these plants don't look the greatest because I did either get them off the clearance rack or they were still in good condition when I brought them home. This is Superbena Sparkling Rose. It has a beautiful pink bloom on it. You can't see here. We have Proven Accents Persian Shield, which is a beautiful purple plant. I also have this beautiful sweet potato vine called Raven. It has more lobed leaves, and so they're very sharp, unlike traditional sweet potato vine. And the only plant I paid full price for is this uh, Truffula Pink Gumfrina, which is going to be the centerpiece of the planter. Uh, and I got it because it's a little bit bigger already and I won't have to worry about it growing out so much. So stick around, I'm gonna fill this thing up. I did run drip prematurely to it before I get it set up and I'm gonna connect it directly to my irrigation system. Uh, if it's not getting enough water, I will hook it to the same system I have on the hay racks, which are watered separately directly from the hose bib. And that's all in the drip 101 video I did last week. So let's get started. So a quick trick on how I treat these plants when I get home. If I'm getting discounted plants that don't look so well, I immediately pick out the ones that are best of the group. And then when I bring them home, I put them in a tray with water soluble fertilizer to give them a little boost to make sure that they're sufficiently moist. And I set them in a park shade location uh, out of the sun to give them a chance to recover. You don't want them directly in the sun. Give them a few days breathing room, get those roots moist and put on a little new growth and get prepared to produce new blooms for you. So this container is a little odd in that you have to put the plants in and fill the soil up as you're putting in plants. So the, all the holes are, have slits, so they should fit four inch containers perfectly. Um, so I'm gonna begin and then I'm gonna be adding a season long fertilizer called Osmocote that will feed the plants throughout the season and then I will give them their weekly water soluble feed as well along with all of my other annuals.
So this container is much more full than I expected it to be. It looks pretty good already, but can you imagine just in a couple weeks what it's gonna look like? I'm going to try and squeeze this Truffula Pink Gomfrina and then three of these purple shields in at the top. There's not much room, so it may take a minute. And that's pretty much it, everyone. It looks a little rough right now. I did water it in, but spending, what is that? 18 times two is 36 plus $8. So that's 40 plus another $6. So for $46 in just plants, I was able to create this container. I've got to get some black zip ties and tie down this drip uh, to the back of the pole so you can't see it as easily. I only had white at the moment. If you're more specifically interested on how I set this up on drip, be sure to check out my drip 101 video that I did last week. It goes over the entire setup that you need to set up from either an existing sprinkler system or directly from a hose bin. I'll put the descriptions to all the names of the plants I use below. That way, if you wanted to recreate it or wanted to know specifically how to spell any of them, you can pick them up yourself. Now is an excellent time to get out there to your garden center and search for discounted annuals because of the heat coming. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I am certainly really excited. I have never stuffed this many annuals into a container. So be sure to like, subscribe, and follow along this summer, and I'll show you updates as it progresses. Also follow my Instagram. I'll be posting a picture of it on here, and I will certainly be updating it over the summer on there as well. So take care, guys.